Welcome to Capital Budgeting Techniques, Part 1. In this uh, session, we are going to look at uh, different learning goals, such as um, key elements of uh, capital budgeting process. Um, we are going to calculate, interpret, and evaluate the payback period. This is the first very basic method uh, or model to evaluate uh, different projects. We'll try to bring more sophistication in our um, um, and analysis by calculating, interpreting, and evaluating net present value and economic value added models. Let's begin. What is capital budgeting? Now, capital budgeting is the process of evaluating and selecting long term investments that are consistent with the firm's goal of maximizing owner's wealth. This has to be understood clearly that any project accepted under capital budgeting must yield a positive value. If it does not yield positive value to the owners, it will not increase or maximize owner's wealth, hence will be rejected. So this is the positive valuation of the project that allows us to uh, compare and rank different projects. Now, every project, long-term project, will require certain funds. These are called capital expenditures which is an outlay of funds by the firm that is expected to produce benefits over a period of time greater than one year. Hence, this is the long term. Then we can differentiate this capital expenditures more clearly by comparing it to operating expenditure, which is an outlay of funds by the firms uh, resulting in benefits received within one year. Now, let's look at the capital budgeting process. Uh, there are many different ways capital budgeting process is explained. If you Google it or you look at different websites, uh, different books, here we uh, divide these, uh, this process into five steps. The first is proposal generation. So the firm actually invites proposals from different departments, different levels uh, about different projects that will add value to the company. Now, the finance department normally review and analyze all the projects, all the projects, and rank them according to different criteria. Now, these are the, ex the, the final decision is made by the uh, CFO, CEO, and in consistency, if it's a very huge project, then it goes to the board of directors for approval. Finally, the project is implemented and once the project is implemented, which means capital expenditures are made and the project is installed, it starts working. Now the, it is monitored and it is monitored very closely. Um, this allows us actually to uh, tweak or, re uh, or set or fine tune the different assumptions of the proposal. Uh, or the project and uh, to see that how closely it uh, follows the initial proposal and how best we can refine tune our proposal uh, in order to bring it closer to the reality. There are different types of projects and we need to understand um, how they uh, are uh, different, what makes them different. So these are independent projects versus mutually exclusive projects. You will learn uh, um, about these uh, a lot more when we will do in practice. However, as a definition, you can see that these are the, the independent projects are the projects whose cash flows are unrelated to or independent of one another. So the criteria is that the acceptance of one does not eliminate the other from further consideration. So for instance, we have two projects the project A and project B. Now project A uh, is about a software that will, development of a software that will make um, the inventory more efficient, uh, inventory management more efficient. While project B has something to do with the machine repair and it will work or repair or it will help work more efficiently. So these are the uh, projects, both projects do not compete with each other, do not compete with each other. Hence, both can be uh, accepted if there are enough funds. 
or it can be prioritized based on urgency rather than um, uh, rather than um, uh, uh, whether a urgency whether a is better than b or b is better than a what is more urgent and what will uh, what is required now then we can go to mutually exclusive projects these are the projects that compete with one another if project a and b compete with each other, with one another for the same amount of funds then we will have to rank them which creates more value and the one that creates more value will be accepted and it will serve or it will stay as a higher in the rank compared to the project b this brings us to the funding scenario now if there is unlimited funds all the projects should be accepted that creates positive value for the firm however we see in reality firms do not have unlimited firms uh, unlimited fund, funds hence there is a concept of capital rationing which is the financial situation in which a firm has only a fixed number of dollars available for capital expenditures and numerous projects compete for these dollars so we have to have a criteria to rank the projects or to find a way that which one brings more value compared to the others once we have capital rationing then there is the projects are also competing with each other in this scenario we will have the criteria and the criteria is accept reject approach versus ranking approach accept reject is the evaluation of capital expenditure proposals to determine whether they meet firms minimum acceptance criteria if the firms has the minimum acceptance criteria then it's easy to implement for instance if a firm has weighted cost of capital or uh, cost of capital or any other um, uh, criteria that can be prescribed in order to compare the projects with each other and then select which one should be accepted and the other one uh, the other should be rejected similarly or in the same on the same lines ranking approach is the ranking of capital expenditure projects on the basis of some predetermined measure such as the rate of return again maybe a vac or uh, some other methods can be used we'll see in a few moments Let's look at our first example, and since we are going to repeat this example again and again, so it's appropriate that you uh, catch the main numbers uh, and the dynamics of this example. So Beck is a medium-sized metal fabricator that is currently con contemplating two projects. Project A requires an initial investment of 42,000, that what we have made, and then we have Project B, an initial investment of 45,000. This is the Project B for $45,000 initial investment if the firm invest in these projects what will they receive so these will receive operating cash flows I mean that cash, the cash flows that will be within one year so 14,000 in the first year and so on until the fifth year so this is basically an annuity of 14,000 and the project b we have first year we will receive 23,000 and then we will receive 12,000 and then onwards the rest of the three years we will receive ten thousand dollars this can be uh, projected on the uh, timeline as follows as you are you know uh, that uh, timeline has end of years and it's the zero at the time that we invested the money it's today and then from one year onwards we are going to receive the cash flows and the cash flows are depicted as follows now the payback method this is the first method in line that we are going to study the first and the payback method is the amount of time required for a firm to recover its initial investment in a project as calculated from cash flow so where our attention is totally on recovery of our investment we do not pay any attention to any other aspect of the cash flows such as time line, time value or the cost of capital etc so we do not pay attention to those ingredients rather we are just um, uh, attentive about how quickly we can recover our original investment so the length of the maximum acceptable payback period is determined by management now there is no criteria for instance if a project a has uh, recovers our initial investment in you know five years let's assume and project b recovers in three years 
Now, if we have these two projects and they are competing with each other, then we will select the B. However, on its own, if we have only one project A and it recovers in five years, we have no way to compare or to quantify this um, uh, decision. Uh, so we only means that if a project total length is 10 years and out of 10 years, it will receive ha in half of the time, five years, we are going to receive our investments. So that's the only uh, uh, only uh, a quantitative uh, criteria that we have available that in five years we will receive the investment back after five years whatever the benefit is we do not take into account we will receive certain benefit but we do not take into account so if the payback period is less than the maximum acceptable payback period accept the project so if it was uh, seven, uh, five years then three years the project b will be accepted if the payback period is greater than the maximum acceptable payback period, reject the project. Now in independent projects, for instance, project A and B are independent and not mutually exclusive. Then in this case, we uh, will, the management sets, uh, um, do not, uh, management sets the maximum acceptable payback period. They do, it does not depends on the project. Rather, it is the general policy of the company that they do not accept certain um, uh, investment related to a certain number of years so uh, if that is said then uh, the company is depends on that maximum acceptable payback period and compare the project's uh, recovery with that time period now we can calculate the payback period for bex project a and b you can see that's 42000 and if uh, you calculate is the three if you sum up the three this becomes the um, 42,000 and this 42,000 is so we can say that this is recovered in three years time while in the other uh, project the project B the 45,000 is recovered so 28 plus 12 that gives us $40,000 and this $40,000 is less than 45,000 so we will enter into the third year so a third year has two parts the 5,000 if I divide it into 5,000 plus 5,000 and add this 5,000 into the amounts it will become 45,000 this means that this 45,000 can be recovered in 2.5 years so on the face of it, it looks like if these two projects are competing with each other, competing with each other, so project A uh, will be rejected um, and project B will be accepted because it recovers the initial investment quickly and within 2.5 years. Now, we have to look at some of the pros and cons of this payback analysis. The payback method is widely used by large firms to evaluate small projects and by small firms to evaluate most projects because it is convenient. It does not require uh, many assumptions that are uh, connected with more sophisticated models. Hence, if a firm, a large firm can save money by uh, evaluating small projects with this method, they will on average the bad decision the bad decision will be averaged out similarly small firms do not have those competencies as you know the uh, or they do not have the capacity to hire um, financial managers um, hence they can uh, quickly or conveniently evaluate different projects based on this method and this is obviously because of the computational simplicity and by measuring how quickly the firms recover its initial investment, the payback period also gives implicit consideration to the time of timing of cash flow. And we can see that uh, the earlier cash flows, the bigger amount in the earlier cash flows um, yields quick recovery. Hence, there is less risk in, left for the firm in the later number of years. So it does give some val time value of money um, to those cash flows. Because it can be viewed as a measure of risk exposure, many firms use the payback period as a decision criteria or as a supplement to other decision techniques. So the quickly you can recover, or the quickly the firm can recover the um, initial investment, the less risk they are left um, 
for in the rest of the uh, investment horizon or investment time period major weaknesses of payback period is that the appropriate payback period is merely subjectively determined number it cannot be specified in the light of wealth maximization goal because it is not based on discounting cash flows to determine whether they add to the firm's value so uh, again the whole discussion comes back to the point that there is lack of time value of money and this two three years recovery period versus 2.5 does not give us the magnitude of risk associated with 2.5 for three years neither we have an idea of the future time uh, future um, cash flows how they benefit the company how they create the value of the company so that 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 benefit that comes in the later part of the project cash flows is not accounted for so this is these are the weaknesses of payback period we can see these weaknesses clearly in these two examples. In the first example, we have two projects, projects gold and silver, and you can see if we apply the payback period, the initial investment of 50,000 can be recovered in three years time. And in the second project, it's again recovered in the three years time. Now, since we do not give any um, uh, time, a consideration for two time value of money, so the cash flow within these three years does not matter which comes first which comes later so it's very difficult to compare the two projects uh, if they are competing uh, projects or mutually exclusive projects similarly we see that in the second example the project x the 10,000 is recovered in first two years while in the second project the 10,000 is recovered in three years however we see that after three years, we have a lot of benefits, 7,000 cash flows coming in the later part of the years. While here we have in the first project X, we are only getting the 1,100. Now the time value of 1,100 or the benefit of 1,100 is less than the 7,000. However, this is not accounted for. This is again another weakness of payback period. So here comes with more sophisticated model net present value it is widely used it is a capital budgeting technique and it is found by subtracting projects initial investment from present value of all its cash flow discounted at a rate equal to the firms of co firms cost of capital so we write normally firms cost of capital as WAC weighted average cost of capital now, now it is calculated as such NPV equals to N summation N T is equal to 1. So for all time period from T1 to all the cash flows included in the question, it is the cash flow 1 plus R T minus, and this is the cash outflow. The cash outflow is on the right side is only because this has to be higher than this one. It has to be greater than this one in order to get a positive NPV. If it is less, then it will be a negative NPV and negative NPVs are straight away rejected. So we let's look at more about these cash flows. However, in this formula, we already know that cash flows are the uh, project cash flows that will earn, project will earn over the number of years. R is the cost of capital, which is we call VAC, weighted average cost of capital. Uh, when we say weighted average cost of capital, it is the firm's debt plus equity cost together so the decision criteria is if npv is greater than zero accept the project and if it's less than zero then reject the project now this is in dollar amount and not in rates so if the investment npv is greater than zero the firm will earn a return greater than its cost of capital if you remember r is a WAC weighted average cost of capital and weighted average cost of capital if discounted if cash flows are all discounted on 1 plus r now this should be greater than the cf naught if this is the case these cash flows are creating value a positive npv such action should increase the market value of the firm 
and therefore the wealth of its owners by an amount equal to the NPV. So this amount should be reflected in higher market valuation of the firm as well as the owner's wealth. Let's look at the same example again. Project A and B with the same in initial investment, 42,000 for A and 45,000 for B. We have uh, uh, same $14,000 annuity for five years while 28,000 for $12,000 and 10,000 in the later years for the project B. Now we have an additional piece of information that if the company has 10% cost of capital, what is the NPV of each project? Now company, the project has to produce anything higher than the 10%. If it is not producing greater than 10%, it will not add value. So let's look at this in a timeline. So this is the project A, and the second one is the project B. In the project A, we have uh, the cash flows plotted on the timeline. These are the end of the year, and initial investment is made at 0, 0. Now, at 10% cost of capital, we have the amount 14,000, all discounted totals to 5307. You can calculate through annuity formula as well, which is present value is equal to cash flow over R, one minus one over one plus R, and this is the present value of annuity formula. You can use it and you can calculate the present value of annuity at time zero. This, when subtracted from 42,000, yields 11,071 dollars. While in the project B, these are all single amounts. Uh, although you could calculate by creating this as an annuity. However, if you use single amount because it's only five years, it's easier. For all values are discounted at cost of capital. This is 10%. And you can see the, uh, the, the, the values are summed up, which equals to $55,924. When this amount is subtracted from $45,000, which is an initial investment we receive, we will be left with 10,924, a positive NPV figure. This is also in the project A is also positive. Now we can see one thing that the project B, which was acceptable under payback method, does not make um, a case under NPV method. In NPV, the project A appears to be better than B. So project A is making is making us more wealthier than project B. The same calculation you can do in the calculator as well as in Excel. And you can see that uh, if you look at the cash flow functions, you can press CF. First, please clean up the memory and reset the calculator if appropriate. Then if you press the CF uh, uh, function on the calculator, you will be required to insert number CF naught, enter it. And then CF1 is the first cash flow, which is 14,000. It's a positive figure. And then we have uh, the uh, press the arrow down and where you can write uh, five. And you can see that you can calculate the NPV uh, with 11,071. And same thing you can do. So this is the time value of money functions. And this is the cash flow functions that have been used. And you can do the same with the cash flow which I was explaining a little bit earlier. And you can get the solution here. Similarly, you can do in the project A and B with the minus sign in the initial years, and then you can calculate the uh, NPV of the uh, NPV of these projects by using Excel function. Now, net present profit profitability index. For a project that has an initial cash outflow, followed by cash inflows, the profitability index is simply equal to the present value of cash flows divided by the uh, initial cash outflows. And if you remember, we have already calculated the um, summation T is equal to one up to N CF T one plus R and that's T. This is the cash flows that we will receive from the project. And if we divide it by CF naught, which is the initial investment, we will receive the uh, uh, the the investments uh, divided by the um, cash flow divided by the investments basically it means that by the investment for every dollar of initial investment how much how much cash flow has been created so this is uh, uh, is, is 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 almost um, great if this is greater than one so if this is greater than one then we invest in the project if it's less than one we do not because if you look at it 
if it's equals to one, this means for every dollar of investment, the same dollars are produced as cash flow. So it has to be greater than uh, the one in order for cash flow to be greater than the investment. Let's calculate the uh, profitability index for BEX investment for both projects A and B. And uh, we can see that uh, the profitability index of A would be equals to the dollar amount of 53,071 divided by the dollar amount of investment, which was $42,000. That comes out to be 1.26. And it, it has no units. And then we have profitability index of B equals to dollar 55924. And that comes out to be, the, the investment comes out to be for $45,000. And this is equals to 1.24. So with prof profitability index, it's easier to see that uh, the first project uh, creates more value compared to the second project, the project B. Now let's look at another model. Uh, this is uh, called economic value edit. It's a registered trademark for the consulting firm Stern, Stevens & Co. And this is very close cousin of the NPV method. And that hence it's always explained with, with NPV. So the EVM method begins the same way that NPV does by calculating projects net cash flows. However, the EV approach subtracts from these cash flows a charge that is designed to capture the return that firms invested demand on the projects, which is the minimum back or weight in average cost of capital. So EVA determines whether a project earns a pure economic profit, a profit above and beyond the normal competitive rate of return in a line of business. So let's look at it in a, in, in a bit more detail. So let's look at economic value uh, added in much more detail. Suppose a certain project cost million dollars upfront, but after that it will generate a net cash inflow each year in perpetuity of $120,000. If the firm's cost of capital is 10%, then what is the NPV and EVA values? So let's look at this in terms of their formulas. NPV is basically discounting all the cash flows, which is T1 plus R. T starts from 1 to N minus CF0, which is the initial investment. Since T is infinity, it's perpetuity. So T is T is limited by infinity, which means it becomes perpetuity question and this is um, $120,000 divided by 10% and we get minus $1 million initial investment that lets us $200,000. Now uh, EVA computations are as follows. The general uh, in representation of EVA is given as net operating profit after tax minus invested capital multiplied by VAC. VAC is the weighted average cost of capital. Now in NPV we are discounting, we are discounting the cash flow by the cost of capital. It becomes economic when we actually find the 10% in absolute term, which is this absolute term for the firm in dollar amounts. So invested capital is basically the this this multiplication will give us the uh, cost in dollars term in dollar terms. So if net operating profit after taxes, which is actually the 120,000 cash flow that the project will create, if it's subtracted from the firm's invested capital multiplied by value, so if invested capital is one million dollars multiply by the 10% cost of capital. Now this amounts to, um, this amounts to 100,000, as you can see. And if we subtract it, we will receive $20,000, which is the economic benefit. Economic benefit in a sense that the, uh, the, the, the uh, project will earn over and above the uh, the uh, cost of capital of the firm in absolute dollar amounts. Now let's review the learning goals. We 
uh, have looked at different elements of capital budgeting, capital um, uh, outlays in terms of um, the expenditures. Also, we have looked at how to calculate, interpret, and evaluate payback period, the pros and cons, and the um, uh, problems and the challenges that it faces, and also the advantages. Also, we have looked at more sophisticated models such as NPV and EVA. EVA is attached to NPV normally, so and but however, NPV is highly used and more the most used uh, method uh, so far in uh, evaluating projects across the world. For now, thank you.